What's up, bro? What's up, bro? All right. <clears throat> what is up, my beautiful family? What's going on, everybody? Tonight is going to be oily. It's going to be, you might need a tissue box. You know, your edges, your yeah, throat, yeah, yeah, yeah. all of it. I love it. I have the absolute honor and privilege to have this conversation, this surgical conversation about when men hurt with my brother, Isaac Curry. Introduce when, yourself, man. Man, listen, I'm Isaac Curry. I'm so, so glad to be here with you all once yeah. again. I thank you for your prayers and for welcoming me. But let's be sure to bless both Tanisha and Jerry Flowers for this ministry that God has been supplying you. So we're so grateful for this moment. I believe that God is really going to do something powerful mm. on this evening. Take out your notes, replay all you, whatever you need to do, God yeah. is about to speak. Yes, this, this is such a needed conversation and a topic that is not addressed enough is when men hurt. Yeah. When's men, the last time you heard yeah. that in church? Men, how do men heal? We don't hear mm. about that. Often we talk, I think about the women, mm. uh, children, but we yet to talk really about men. And so I think it's a great opportunity for us to be able to dive into it. Yeah. And for women and men alike yeah. to be able to listen in on this conversation. Absolutely. Yeah. I think it's gonna be powerful. I need everybody drop in the room where you're from. This is your first time, tag us. Share it, share yes. it, share it, come on. So um, the text that we're gonna read that is gonna really be the backdrop for tonight's preaching come presentation come on, come um, on. comes from Judges chapter 15. Judges 15, 15. chapter 15, mm -hmm. verse one. It says, after a while in the time of wheat harvest, it happened that Samson visited his wife with a young goat. Mm -hmm. And he said, let me go into my wife into her room mm -hmm but her father would not permit him to go in. Mm. Her father said, I really thought you thoroughly hated her. Come on. Therefore, I gave her to your companion. Mm. Is not your younger sister better than she? Please take her instead. Come on. And Samson said to them, this time I shall be blameless regarding the Philistines if mm. I harm them. Then Samson went and caught 300 foxes. You gotta be fast. <laughs> 300. Come on, man. Cut 300 on. foxes and took torches, turned the foxes tail to tail, mm -hmm. and put a torch between each pair of tails. Mm. When he had set the torches on fire, he let the foxes go into the standing grain of the Philistines and burned up both the shocks and the standing grain as well mm. as the vineyard and olive groves. Yeah. Then the Philistines said, Who has done this? Yeah. And they answered, Samson, the son-of-law of the Tenemite, mm. because he has taken his wife and given her to his companions. So the Philistines came up mm. and burned her and her father Come on. with fire. Come on. What, what we want you to identify, what we want you to see on tonight from on. this particular biblical narrative mm. is when a man is out of control. Come on anger out of control, lust mm. out of control, pride mm. out of control. Mm. It is a fire that is burning up our homes. Mm. It is burning up marriages. Mm. It is burning up hearts. Children. It's burning up children. Mm. It's bur burning up communities. And mm. we need to have this conversation because when we don't know how mm. to deal with the fire of our anger, mm. when we don't know how to deal with the fire of our pain, we are burning things up. I have a sneaky suspicion mm -hmm. that there's a woman watching this message that says, I know what you're talking about. I've experienced it. Because my father burned some things up, my mm -hmm. ex burned some mm -hmm. things up, and there's some brothers mm -hmm. watching this message. And you're saying, I fully know what you're talking about because mm -hmm. my father burned some things up. In fact, his fire has impregnated me. Uh-huh. And I've been, I've been burning things up, right? I think one of the powerful things about that text, I believe you said the father had ended up saying, I thought. Mm -hmm. You no longer, you hated her, right? Yeah. Which says to me that something about his behavior, it, it's, it's one thing for a man to have a reaction, but it's another, another thing for a man to stonewall. And so in this situation, when he didn't get what he wanted, he had a tendency, a pattern yeah. to stonewall. He stonewalled, meaning that he shut 
completely down, so much so that the father saw his behavior. Yeah. He saw the behavior of Samson, and he assumed that from his behavior that he hated his daughter. That's so good. The pattern of Stonewall, and that is something that is so sneaky, but mm. so often when you mm. don't, when things don't work out the way you desire for them to work out, Talk. do you have a tendency to stonewall? Do you have a tendency to shut down? Now you punish other people with your silence. I'm like, I'm not gonna keep on going, but I'm just, that's just powerful. I, yeah. We didn't talk about this, yeah. but that's just powerful in the text though. So, so what we're gonna do is, there's this constant theme I've done it as a man. Yeah. You probably have done it as a man. It is a tendency to just totally shut down and stonewall, like yeah, you said. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we want to deal with that. What what really causes for him mm. to shut down? Mm. What what really ca causes for him mm. to close in? You seem like you got it. Mm. One of one of the things that I've learned through personal experience, but even mm -hmm. through my research and even through counseling, is we stonewall, brick wall, brick wall. That's our way of insulating ourselves mm -hmm. from experiencing a familiar pain. That's so good. Right. And so if you if you yell at me or if you do something that reminds me of something, mm -hmm. I will insulate myself the best way I know how to insulate myself so that I don't experience the familiar pain is to stonewall. I will mm -hmm. shut down, go silent, mm -hmm. whatever I need to do to prepare to, to take care of my own self, even if it means punishing you. Hmm. Yeah, hmm. yeah. But that is something familiar. That, yeah. that that stonewalling, that getting quiet, that getting silent. And many of us know, even I know from experience, my silence will hurt you more than my words will. And sometimes, wow. so what I would do is just be silent. Be distant. Yeah. And I think that's one of the things that hurt children, mm -hmm. women, yeah. from a man's perspective, is when we become emotionally distant. Hmm. I've heard that more than I've heard anything else because we get away with that because it's not physical abuse. But hmm. when I withdraw, when I build that wall immediately, yeah. I'm talking about the cold shoulder. We yeah. do it so effortlessly because this is a pattern from my home, from my yeah. childhood. And yeah. this is something that I get to get away with because you can't do, you can't, you can't identify it. You can't put your hand on it, but yeah. this is something that I do. So... I think a good question is, what is the difference between him stonewalling due to self-defense mm. and not even recognizing that my self-defense mm. is actually an offense to my mm. family? Mm. How do I basically discern the difference between when a man is stonewalling or shutting down because he's defending his heart mm -hmm. or what he feels as though, what I'm going to touch in a minute after you touch it. He feels as though this is an area of me I don't trust her with or trust him with yeah. versus I'm using silence as a form of abuse. As a tool, as a yeah. weapon, as yeah. a weapon. Yeah. yeah, that's a good question, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that is a good question. Yeah. The, I would say for my own self and from people, close colleagues, it's about self-awareness self mm -hmm. because sometimes you're doing it and you don't realize that you're doing it to protect yourself. You don't mm -hmm. realize it, but I think mm -hmm. for many of us, we use it as a weapon and we don't, we don't, for, I will, I will, I will say it right now. Some of us don't even realize we do that. Wow. And when you try to tell us about ourselves, we're unwilling to hear it because all we feel like you're doing is probably a familiar thing is you're pointing your finger saying we're not doing something good enough. Yeah, right. That's good. And so because we're. All we hear is you saying what we're not doing, what we're not doing, and all we're thinking about is what we are doing, and so now we're trying to, de we're defending, and now we're becoming silent, and mm -hmm. now this brick wall, some of it is self-awareness or the lack thereof, right? Yeah. And I think that's a maturity thing. I think that's mm -hmm. an emotional maturity thing, and I think they say that men mature a little slower than women, but I think that is an emotional Yeah maturity, emotional maturity, a thing that we don't often look for yeah. when, we're, when we're searching for a partner or when we're courting. We, we don't pay attention to the, the emotional part, right? I think yeah. that's important. What yeah. you got to say? Well, about you that? don't give it enough time. I don't think in the, in like the dating or the, the courtship phase, yeah. we don't allow ourselves to see them in every season. Come on, man. If you don't see him, if you haven't seen him mad, you don't know him. 
If you hadn't seen him in the summer months versus the winter months, you don't know how he responds to the heat. I know it sounds That's crazy, good. but you need the entire season yeah. because you need to see the pattern of behavior or how one responds when when the spring comes hmm. and, all, and all of the, <laughs> the, 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 the stuff is on the car, you know, and they got all the hay fever. You, yeah. need, you need to experience him yeah. in all seasons, right? Yeah. Mm. And the thing is, sometimes we as a man, haven't even experienced all seasons. Mm. I don't know how to deal with fall, mm. the season of losing things. Mm. I, I really don't know, even when I have a season of growth, mm. I don't know that behind the season of growth mm. is a season of a valley. Mm. God takes you to the mountain, yeah. and then he also takes yeah. you to the valley. Yeah. And then in, in, in that, the season of death, winter, mm. I don't know how to handle when I lose relationships. Come on. I don't know how to handle when I'm in a losing season. Yeah. I don't know how to handle when I'm losing friends. Yeah. When I'm literally losing my parents. Yeah. When I'm literally losing my mind. Yeah. So sometimes we ourselves haven't even been in all of those seasons. Mm -hmm. And you'll go off the person he is in summer. Yes. Because everything seems to look nice Come and everything on, seems Come to be on. good. But I really don't know how this man will handle a crisis. Come on. And until we really deal with the area of, I possibly never saw what manhood looks like. Come on, man. I, I never really saw what health looks like. Come on. So here's another perspective. Um, I think sometimes the reason we shut down is because the culture is obsessed with the man being strong. Mm. Men don't do that. Come Suck on. that up. You're Come not on. supposed to cry. No, Come you're not on. crying over that. That's yeah. a little scratch. And so yeah. what that does, yeah. the little boy is never allowed to be a little boy. Come on. Which is why when you enter into a covenant mm -hmm. with husband and wife, usually it's because he feels comfortable with his little child, with his little boy coming out and mm -hmm. you don't ridicule. Because yeah. most, if not all of my life, I've had to keep my little boy hidden mm -hmm. and I will not allow my little boy to come mm -hmm. out because I know that if I play or if I'm not always the strong man who has mm -hmm. all of the answers, who makes no errors, that yeah. you might ridicule me and say that I'm not enough. That's so good. Right, but when I find a woman Hmm. Who was who has seen my little boy yeah. and looks at my little boy and says, I love you too. Wow. Then you know what? <laughs> I do. It's important. This look, is important. Look, look, let's dig deeper. Dig deeper. All right. A lot of times when he has heard men don't do that, mm. that's for girls. Mm -hmm. We don't cry like that. Mm -hmm. What that does is he grows up mm -hmm. with the man physicality. He has the anatomy of a man, mm -hmm. but that emotional part of him, yeah. he was taught you don't expose that. Mm -hmm. So that goes into the closet. Yes. But but that that emotional side of you, your wife is going to need it. That emotional side of you, your son is going to need Come it. On, man. That emotional side of you, your daughter is going to need it. And so sometimes the difficulty Yes. In marriage is when you recognize there's a part of him that he hasn't even come to grips with yes. yet. Now, I can already kind of feel somebody's like, oh, he shouldn't handle a little boy. He need to be all man. You have a little girl, too. Man. <laughs> I, I almost got up and walked out, but I realized I got to remain seated, right? I, you, you speak in gospel there. I think there, there is, not I think there is a little girl on the inside of you. If you say that there isn't, yeah. then... You're going to be stuck in a situation and 10 years from now, maybe you'll come to the realization that there is a little girl that yeah. needs affirmation, that needs to be told I'm pretty mm -hmm. and I'm doing this well, just like that little boy. And the yeah. moment that we realize that, I think the greatest relationship is when you can encounter someone who perhaps notices that you won't allow your little boy to come out, mm -hmm. but has a way to let you know yeah. that I'm going to draw the little boy, I'm gonna call and beckon the little boy out from you mm -hmm. so I can show you that it's okay, right? Yeah. My wife did a, a, an absolute awesome job at that because mm -hmm. I, I, we're not talking about what we think, we're talking mm -hmm. about what we know, right? Yeah. I'm talking to the point where I'm crying mm -hmm. to my wife. She look at me, what's wrong? I don't know. I, 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 do you know how hard it is for a man mm -hmm. to be able to confess to a woman that he does not know what's wrong with him? Mm -hmm. With not having an answer, 
Because if I if I say that I don't wow. know, and you and the fact that she it's okay, it's okay, baby. You don't have to know. Yeah. I don't have to know. I'm weeping now because I I, I feel like I it's okay for me to be in a situation. Yeah. Well, I don't know what's wrong with me. Yeah. I'm not dysfunctional. Mm -hmm. I'm not dis deficient. I'm human. Yeah. And so when you find a mature mm -hmm. woman or a woman who is in tune, who can discern and see that I need to help that little boy come out yeah. and just find little incremental ways to make it a safe space, the atmosphere, because women are hey, building the atmosphere to build the right atmosphere so that you know what? Yeah. My little boy don't even ask me for permission. He just come out, you know, because he's yeah. comfortable. Yeah. And then you make it a safe place, right? Yeah. This is so good, man, because it's so countercultural. Mm. Um, I could just kind of like feel the vibes like, nah, he shouldn't be crying like that. Come he on, shouldn't. Man. He shouldn't. But listen. Come on. The thing is, for us to have kingdom, the word of God lets us know wounds from a friend yeah. can be trusted. Yeah. A lot of us have been sex partners, but not friends. Come on, man. A lot of us have been orgasm givers, but not friends. E. A lot of us have been good for the gram. Mm -hmm. You're a good image, yeah. but we're not friends. Absolutely. Until I could trust you. I, this happened to me when I was, when something really hurt me, yeah. really hurt me deeply in, in 2013. I went into the garage, Yeah. got on my knees and was crying. Mm. I didn't want my wife to see me. Mm. And then I felt kind of like not as much of a man because something hurt me so deeply that the weight room wasn't taking it out. Come on. The, the punching bag wasn't working. Yeah. Tears had to fill my, fill my eyes. Yeah. Sometimes it takes for tears to fill your eyes for you to see clearly. Come on, man. And so in that moment, crying, and I was trying to make sure my wife didn't find me or hear me, and she came out in the garage. She really didn't even ask me what was wrong. She just held me. Um, th there's something about knowing that you have a safe place with your woundedness. Man, that, that, that's powerful mm. because that reminds me of Genesis chapter 2. I think it's about verse 24. The Bible says, I always look at Adam and Eve because they are a blueprint. God created them so mm. that they can be a blueprint for us. The Bible says that, they, that both Adam and Eve were naked mm. and unashamed of themselves yeah it was a point they were thriving in their marriage mm. when they were able to be naked I'm talking about naked I wasn't trying to hide I don't need any leaves yeah. you see me I see you and I receive all of you that passage is there for a reason mm -hmm. God wants the union man and wife husband mm -hmm. and wife to be naked to yeah. be able to receive all and if I can't show you my wounds yeah if I can't show you my heart, yeah. it has scratches, it's torn, it, ain't, it doesn't look like the heart on TV. My heart has been through this. If I can't, if I can't leave that yeah. in your hands without ridicule, shame, or guilt, I can't be naked with you. But how do you, how do you, how do you, how do you do that in a culture that constantly gives you fig leaves? Man. How, how, how do you... <laughs> How do you do that in a culture that gives you fig leaves and when you have tried before to show your scars, your scratches, and they mocked you and you ended up on shade Rejected. room and they, and they posted yeah. you? How do you deal with that? Because we know the word of God lets us know, confess your faults one to another so that you may be healed. I have a faulty area. Mm. So if I speak, if I, if I begin to speak to somebody about this, there's a level of, level of healing that only comes from venting. The mouth is the mm -hmm. ventilation system of the heart. Yeah. But, but we say these things, and I'm, I'm just speaking as somebody who may be asking, but it's 2021. It's uh -huh. 2021. Nobody walks around naked. Nobody's mm -hmm. relationally nude. Mm -hmm. Nobody's everybody open. Has everybody a has a skeleton everybody in the has a mask. How do I still implement a kingdom perspective when everything around me is handing me fig leaves? And now when I look around, mm -hmm. I notice that everybody's in the uniform of fig leaves, mm -hmm. but but you're telling me I'm, I'm required to be so whole where I could be naked? Hey, it starts, if you ask me, the truth of the matter is, it doesn't start in a relationship. It doesn't start in marriage. Please say that again. It does not start in a relationship. Hmm. It does not begin in marriage. Talk. It starts in your own singleness. If you can't be naked with your own... See, mm. you don't lie to someone else. You don't hide from God. You hide from yourself 
Then you hide from God. Then you hide from people, right? And so here's the thing. You can't expect to enter into a relationship or a marriage if you're still hiding from self, if you're still hiding from God. Because your relationship with other people, your relationship with, with self will be a reflection in your relationship with God. And so the truth of the matter is, how do you do this? Mm -hmm. You have to begin with self. The truth of the matter is there are things in your life, in the crevices of your heart, in what I call your hurt locker, right, mm. that you have not unlocked or opened since high school, mm. since when you were in, and, and, the, and you need to start wow. talking about that to your own self and to the Lord. Silence, I always say silence is the cycle. Wow. Si silence is the pattern. Hmm. And until you break the silence, you cannot break the pattern. Yeah. And so you have to talk, right? And so how do, you, how do you do this? You don't need to pattern your life like everybody else anyway. Talk. Right? And so we, if, you, if you gauge your life based on hmm. Instagram, if you gauge your life based on everybody in the neighborhood, you're going to continue to replicate everything that they... You are called to be different. You are set apart. Your yeah. relationship and your marriage should, you weren't called to be normal. You were called to be abnormal. God called you to be set apart and set apart from everything and everyone. Yeah. Holy. This is so good, man. Yeah. yeah. Th th this is so good. Now listen, mm. listen, there has to be a time in your life as a man yeah. where I recognize I cannot lead while bleed. Mm. I cannot lead while mm. bleed. What if we normalize celebratory moments of those who could still hop off the field? Mm. In football, yeah. when somebody gets hit, everybody's kind of like, oh, that was a hard hit. Yeah. When they start hopping off the field, what do people do? Mm. I mm. want to celebrate every man mm. who has recognized I'm unhealthy. Mm. I want to celebrate every man who recognized that hit was so severe. I, I mean, need somebody I need, to. I need assistance. I need assistance. I need help to get off of this. Yeah. Because when you enter into marriage, when you enter, when you enter into relationships, when you just deal with people, period, it is going to require that compassionate, tender, loving part of you that society, culture, and the media is said that's what men don't do. Empathy. Yeah. I have to be able to be tender. I have to be able to be gracious. Mm. And sometimes, we're going to touch on that later, um, I know my wife helped me to discover that feeling that you have is healthy here. That feeling that you have is safe here. Come on. Because if you are so used to being mocked due mm. to that sympathetic part of yourself, Rejection. you'll constantly hide it. So a lot of us are exhausted from, a lot of us are exhausted from trying to extend healthy things on unhealthy people. Mm. Boy, mm. a lot of us have been doing spiritual disciplines mm. on devil sent people. <laughs> say that again, say that again, <laughs> say that again. We have been trying to do spiritual things on devil sent people. Mm. So we have arrived to this place, ain't nobody got time for that, I ain't doing that. And what mm. you're doing is I'm exhausted from living out scripture on people who are a contradiction to my faith. Mm. That thing we were talking about earlier in the whip, man. Um, oh, would you would you the, unpack it? The, the Esau complex. Yeah. Like, I, look, everything is about for me. I, I point it back to what I call the Esau complex. And even mm -hmm. when you were talking about Samson and how he immediately uh, exhibited anger, right. right, fire, and everybody suffered because of the anger that he could not control. Right. But what about the anger that you don't even realize is there? There is an, what, what about the anger that is an undercurrent and that you don't even realize is within you, right? Wow. And when I say that, I think about Esau. Don't let me miss you. Don't Esau, in, in Genesis chapter 27, 41, if you put that and you take that note, the Bible teaches that he began to hate his brother. Yeah. Right. And if you learn the story about wow. that, you learn that it was in his home and childhood that he experienced rejection. Mm -hmm. Right. He experienced hurt from his mother, yeah. from the father and from his brother. Right. Mm -hmm. And so as a result, he hated everybody, but he hated his brother. Yeah. And if you keep on reading, his father told him, you can shake that yoke mm -hmm. from around your neck when you decide to. And why I call it the Esau complex is because 
they decided to come together, Jacob and Esau, mm -hmm. and let and just let everything rest. I forgive you. I love you. But they moved on their separate ways. And the powerful thing about this is, yeah. if you keep on reading the text, Esau moves to a place called Seir, S-E-I-R. His mm -hmm. name Esau, Edom, right? And he moves to a place called Seir. Don't let me lose you. If you keep on reading, you read the book of Obadiah, and God is one chapter, and one chapter is, to, is written to one person, one people, yeah. the Edomites, Esau and all of his descendants. God yeah. said, I'm going to wipe you all out from the face of the earth because you all wouldn't help your brother's children, Israel, wow. all of the Israel, his brother, right? And, he's, and God says, I'm going to wipe you all out, but that's not it. If wow. you keep reading, that's, now that's Obadiah chapter 1, verse 10, verse 18. You can look at those two verses. But if you go over to Ezekiel, mm -hmm. Ezekiel chapter 35, mm -hmm. verses 1 through 5, mm -hmm. what you will discover is God says, he's talking to, to Edom. Mm -hmm. He says, you have an ancient anger. Wow. He says, I'm getting rid of all of you all. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to wipe you all clean because you have an ancient hatred, an ancient anger within you. So wow. what am I saying? Some of us mm -hmm. have an ancient hatred, an ancient anger mm -hmm. that's on the inside of us, mm -hmm. us men. Wow. And I'm, I'm going to talk about my own self Man. that is generational. You don't even realize it. You might say, no, it's not generational. You might be the one beginning it. Esau wow. thought he dealt with his issues. Watch this. Jacob and Esau, they both come from the same home. Mm -hmm. Jacob decided to wrestle with God and to give his issues to God. Yeah. Esau decided that he was going to deal with it himself because he thought his willpower was strong enough. Yeah. 500 years later, ancient wow. anger is the reason that God said, I'm going to wipe you all out. Your, oh. entire, your entire lineage... Mm. I'm talking to the man right now. We're talking to the man right now. You're mm. responsible for your descendants. You're responsible for your lineage because there could be an anger. I wrote a mm. book called Invisible Disabilities a few years ago, and I talked about an anger that was on the inside of me that I didn't know was present, bro. Wow. Because of because of a, a fatherless home and a mother who had, had gotten uh, who went to jail at a young age. But wow. I blessed my mother. And all of these things happen, and I couldn't quite hold down relationships, yeah. had a temper, and, and, and it was a crazy thing until one day God told me, well, you've got an ancient anger on the inside of you. And the only way hmm. you're going to deal with that is by allowing me to deal with you. That's so good, man. That is absolutely so good. The, the way you just referenced all of that and put it together is just, you know, I, I really don't think that we understand that sometimes we are dealing with spiritual strongholds. Come on, man. We, we really don't, man. Like, we really don't understand that yeah. you are not wrestling against flesh and blood. Come A on, lot man. of us, you are mad at the wrong person. Come on, man. You are mad at the wrong person. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. The yeah. flesh and blood of your mother. Yes. The flesh and blood of Come an ex. On. The flesh and blood of a father. You are not wrestling Come on. with that. Come on. In the spirit realm, there has been a successful victory in your bloodline. Yes. And the weapon hell is using is anger. Mm. Mm, come on. The, 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 weapon, the weapon that hell is using is silence. Yes. And we yes. see it passed on. What goes, you know, I say this all the time. What goes on in this house stays in come this on. house. That doesn't keep our family safe. That mm -hmm. keeps us sick. Mm. That keeps us to where we're not dealing with the ancient warfares. Come on. If I man. say it how I want to say it, a lot of us are dealing with unfinished combat. Ooh. You're dealing with your battles. Then you're dealing with the, the Goliath that daddy never defeated, Come on. grandmother never defeated, great-grandmother never defeated. Come on. And so now we have an ancient lust. Yes. This is why I believe certain chains are harder to break. Yes. Man, it was easy for me to stop smoking weed. That was nothing. Come on, man. Man, it, it was easy for Come me to on. stop messing, you know, messing around with girls. But, but when it comes to this anger... Mm. Or, or switch. Man, it was easy for me to, you know, forgive him. It's, I, I let that go. I'm out here trying to grind and do my thing. But when it comes to this lust, come on. I'm talking about you can go back in elementary school. There was just this, 
before you even got an erection, Come before on. you even know the use of that besides. Come on. <laughs> before, you had pure, before you ever had puberty, Come there on. was just these thoughts. There were certain shows that mom and them would say, cover your eyes, and you were like, Come on, man. Come on. <laughs> you wanted to see it? Right. I'm going to save that scene. That was Come at 23 on. minutes and 47 seconds. Come and on. when they're gone, you're going back, not even recognizing there is an ancient spirit. You don't even have to just, you don't have to deal with anger. We can move from anger. We could talk about lust because even for me, that portal was mm -hmm. open at the age of six. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know it, but yeah. that portal has been open. And before you know it, you find yourself attracted. Mm -hmm. It's a portal open and you're just feeding that portal. You're feeding mm -hmm. that portal all through your years. And so I'm bound. I'm struggling with lust my whole life. Even as even becoming saved, I'm struck. I thought I was just supposed to just struggle with it until mm -hmm. the Lord wiped it from my whole conscience. Mm -hmm. But that took work and that took me submitting fully to the Lord. Mm -hmm. But I like what you said, bro. You said we're not dealing with just our Goliath, but we're dealing with, you know, like our parents' Goliath or our uncle's Goliath. Mm -hmm. But when you study Goliath, Goliath came from a place called Gath, mm -hmm. G-A-T-H. Yeah. What am I mean? Read 2 Chronicles. You'll discover mm -hmm. that Goliath wasn't existing by himself. Goliath brother. had brothers. Yeah. Goliath had <laughs> children. The giants that you're fighting are just the children of the giants that your parents and your grandparents and great-grandparents were struggling with. Man. And so I'm just saying to you, Goliath has children. Yeah. <laughs> you got to go. So that's why David, that's why David, when he got ready to fully execute all of Goliath at yeah. the very end of his ministry, yeah. he had to go to where Goliath and the family lived. Yeah. He had to get to the source yeah. because ju just dealing with the symptoms, yeah. you're going to be fighting with them for the rest of your life, your children yeah. for the rest of their lives. But yeah. you got to get to the very foundation, the I very source of where it's being bred. Get to the root of it. And then also what I love about the, the, the battle between David and Goliath is once the stone hit him, a lot of people think once the stone hit Goliath, he was dead. Mm. The Bible says sunk into his head and he fell down. Mm -hmm. David then runs across the field, gets the sword, and then chops his head off. What in your life have you thought that was dead that was just really in a coma? Mm. Mm. <laughs> this is why something could happen in college. Five years later, you, I thought I was over that. Your mm. Goliath was passed out. Mm. <laughs> Got complacent. <laughs> your Goliath Got was passed out. It's like scary movies, bro. I always hate it. Like, you, you watch scary movies. <laughs> Come there's on. a killer in the Tell house. It. You Tell hit it. him in the head and you Tell hug it. him. Are you okay? <laughs> Are you all right? You Kill him. You, you turn your back to the killer. On the, just because the killer is on the ground doesn't mean the killer is dead. Yeah. Turn your back and you just, you know, just because they went down doesn't mean that they're out. Yeah. And, and you, you, you best believe hell will send people in your life to get that Goliath out of the coma. Mm. To yep. revive. To revive. Your struggle. This is how I identify unhealthy people. Mm. Who in my life is resurrecting what I'm trying to put in the grave? Come on, man. Who in my life agitates a tomb mm. that I know runs in my bloodline, mm. but if I keep on letting them mess with that tomb, yeah. could it possibly come back to life? And David was like, mm. Go ahead. No, 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 no. I'm, you, you just, you spit so, the gospel. Let, let's, let's, let's unpack it, man. All you right. you start speaking about lust. And I was thinking about also we could do the, the ancestor trace of how David had a lust issue. And then his yeah. son Solomon took it to a no, whole another level. Mm -hmm. We can go all the way back to Rahab the harlot. Mm -hmm. That was also in the bloodline of David. Mm -hmm. But we know we could do a whole sermon. Oh, there was we, somebody we else we in the bloodline We go all the way back to Ham and yeah. how the portal was open when he, <laughs> when he peeked in and saw his father naked. And his mm -hmm. father said, you're cursed because mm -hmm. you you desire to see me naked. Like that was a portal. We can, look, that, look, we can talk and go places. So so let's deal with, <laughs> I feel like somebody's listening, my lust ain't ancient, it's now. <laughs> but let's deal with something that I don't think has been really addressed in the church enough, but Come I on. want to address it. Just because I'm saved, love God, does not mean I don't get horny. So what do I do, especially as a man, excuse mm -hmm. me sisters for a moment, yeah, yeah. but what do I do as a man when I've had multiple but kingdom tells me solo. 
Yeah. I'm used to duets. I love harmonies. Come on, man. But Come now, on. now Come on. God is saying, okay, one woman for the rest for of the our rest life. Of your life. But I've had Ashley, Kansas, I've Stacey, always had options. Victoria. How do I get to a place where I can be faithful and holistic? Yeah. Not just faithful, because mm -hmm. it's one thing trying to resist it. Mm -hmm. It's another thing being whole and I love what I'm in. Absolutely. How do I get to a place where I overcome all of my partners mm. to where I could trust that the one that God has for me could satisfy me in all those ways and I won't be bound to go back to that? Mm. That's a powerful thing. I know women, women, look, women like this right here. Say, please, please say, say, say I want to hear. They, they talking real. Listen. What do I how do, do, you do as when, a man? I'm, when I'm saved and I wake up in the morning? with an erection. Mm -hmm. Like, what do I do? And some of us don't even realize yeah. that, that the battle continues and it intensifies when you go to sleep. Yeah. And so what you're doing through the day, what you're feeding your spirit through the, throughout the day, what you're allowing yourself access and access to you will become magnified mm -hmm. when you are asleep, when your mm -hmm. defenses are down. And so you don't, you think that going to sleep, and this is what I was teaching some of my people before, you think Women and men, you think that when you go to sleep, it's a green light for your dreams to do whatever you want to do. It's, it's a green light. You actually have power over how you dream. But if you think dreaming, men, that you get to do whatever and, and sleep with whoever, but when you wake up, then you're back to holy, it doesn't work like that, mm -hmm. right? And so I think that one thing is powerful is that when you talk about options, mm -hmm. I know this from personal experience. I'm yeah. not talking about what I know from other people, what I've experienced, yeah. to when you have multiple partners, you've been in, you've been in a fraternity, you, you can have whoever, whatever. <laughs> you, com you, you come <laughs> from this where you have options to the point where you're saying no more options, mm -hmm. and you allow culture to feed you this lie that it can't happen. Yeah. And then you compare and your life to some of the celebrities and because they can't keep a marriage, you say, oh, it's no need for me to get married because mm -hmm. nobody else can remain married. You shouldn't mm -hmm. be patterning your life according mm -hmm. to the world, right? Say that again. You should hold, hold. Also, too, there are pastors that do that. Somebody would be like, yeah, but people do it in church, too. Mm -hmm. Deal with it. Yep. Listen, just like we talked about with the women, it has to begin with you. You got to be hungry enough to want God to overtake your entire life, Come not on. some of your life. Come on. Listen to the man who has had multiple sex partners in my life. Right. God has redeemed me of it. That's why I can tell you about it. No guilt, no shame there. Yeah. I'm talking about the, I just got married, right? Mm -hmm. I'm talking about the one who had every excuse not to commit. Yeah. It's not until you come to the end of yourself, man. I'm talking to you, but women, you can apply this to your life. Mm -hmm. And when you say, God, I don't want, just want you to have control of some of my life, but yeah. I want you control of every part of my life, which yeah. means what I eat, where I sleep, what Talk. I watch, mm -hmm. what I listen to. I know it sounds like you're in the military, but when you're doing it for God and you're allowing God to overcome your life, it's not me. You want to because this is holy living, not now, don't miss this. Yeah. I'm not talking about willpower. Because yeah. if you're doing this on willpower, you're going to yeah. fall by, by day five, right? Yeah. You go, by, <laughs> after 20, hour five. I, I, hour, but look, I try to be gracious. <laughs> it's not until through that fasting lifestyle where you, mm -hmm. you literally arrive to a place, God, look, I've tried every other way. No yeah. other way can get me to the place of holiness in which I'm in your presence. What I need right. is for you to take over every aspect of my life. And that means every day I need to be conscientious of how I am feeding my spirit. When there you get to that place where you don't get, you don't want to watch the taste has been taken Talk, out of your sir. mouth. I don't want to watch certain shows. Hmm. I don't want to watch certain things on Netflix. Talk. Even now, let me help you. And when you get married, purity doesn't stop after, after you get married. Dig deep. Let's go. It does, it, it, it does not stop after you get married. I'm I still, I'm not, baby, mm, not that, that's a sex scene. I'm not try, I'm trying to keep the <laughs> portal closed. It's all about my wife. And so, you, and so when you practice this in your singleness, 
You get to continue to perpetuate. You can you get to practice it when you're married, but you have yeah. to begin. I know. I used to hear it. Now, now I know so the moment I said that you were like, mm, I'm not living. I don't. I want to. I want to live and be happy. That's the talk of someone who hasn't given their life fully. I'm wow. talking about the Spirit of God to overcome you, the Holy Spirit to overcome you. When you look at this as a rule book, when you look at this as, as not really wanting to because of all the work, that's, that's the talk, that's the language of someone who is almost, but not fully ready, right? But you have to be like, God, yeah. take all of me, yeah. and I want you to regulate everything that I feed my spirit yeah. Because I want to be pure for you. That's where it absolutely begins. Yeah, yeah. And I love it um, that you said that what I watch, what I listen to, the beauty of singleness, we're about to get in trouble. Come on. The beauty of singleness is it allows you to detox from orgasms sent by devils. I firmly believe, I said this in the sex trap, I firmly believe the enemy attaches great sex to counterfeits. Come on, man. It's so good because it's so lethal. Mm -hmm. I'm laying down a deposit. When you try to get free, yes. you will have withdrawals from what you did with him, Come on, from man. what you did with her. Come on. And until you get to the place where I'm willing to endure suffering. Yeah. I'm telling y'all, this this house gonna hit. Yeah. I have to endure intentional suffering. I have to get used to not getting my way. Mm. I don't care if it's walking at Walmart, seeing a Hershey bar. You know you can eat it because you've been working out. But Preach. you're like, I'm saying no because I to want my, my body to know I run this. Yes. I run this. I have self mastery. It comes with powering your no. That's the beauty of fasting. It strengthens your no. Come on. If your no is weak, your spirit will be weak. Come on. I have to strengthen my no. Mm. And that is only gonna happen, it may sound like legalism to certain people, but like I articulated before, when you are pregnant, when you are carrying something, it's not legalism for me to not eat things with mercury in it. Come on. It's not legalism for me to hang around people who nobody, smoke. Nobody has to ask you to do it. You want to do it. Right. You desire to do it. I care about what I carry. Mm. Do you care about what you carry enough to recognize there are certain things that are hazardous to my baby destiny in my soul? I don't, I, I don't have any. I, I can't say anything else behind that. I act, <laughs> can I repeat it? Let, let me let, look. You have something on the inside of you. You have to care. But see, this is the thing. The problem is you probably don't recognize what you have on the inside of you. Mm. Because if you have not come to the realization of the baby, of the anointing, of the power, of the future that you have on the inside of you, then you won't make the necessary, come on, talk to me. Look, 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 look. so you and your wife just found out she's expecting, mm -hmm. right? How does she know? Because we've been practicing. <laughs> Beyond that, <laughs> physically, did she? Because <laughs> she starts to see a difference in her body. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what caused? So, sorry, y'all. No, yeah, you're yeah. good. So what? What caused her to recognize practicing has actually got something to start growing? What did she? Did she take a pregnancy test? Did she start to get nauseous? Did she feel herself getting tired? What happened? Man, it's it's all of that. I think you're gonna start. You you you're going to see changes. Like mm -hmm. you're going to see changes in your eating, mm -hmm. and 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 you're, and you're going to get see changes in your in your in your nauseous. Like like it like <laughs> you don't you don't feel the same. You can't control it. It like it's it's there, and that, and then you say, oh, you know what? I need to I need to. Then you're like I'm I'm with child, and now that I'm with child, all of a sudden. Nah, I, mm -mm. because I have something on the inside of me wow. that I don't, I, I, that cannot be given birth in the first trimester. Wow. I want to see it to its full term. And so that means I'm going to do whatever is necessary yeah. to make sure I take care of what's on the inside of me. You, he said, you have something, man, I'm talking, let me talk to you, man. I know it. I know this sounds ridiculous, but man, man you have something in your belly, right? 
Now, in the natural, man can't give birth. I get it. But in the spiritual, you have something on the inside of you that God wants to birth inside of you. And, and he wants to bring it to the outside of you. And you must be mindful yeah. that you have some things that need to change. Mm. Yeah, you can't eat the same. You mm. can't go to the same places because you got to nurture what you have. And look, what a lot of us don't even recognize is that you are getting spiritually nauseous. So I want you to get this clearly. What happens first, we're talking spiritually but practically. What happens first practically is things start to make you sick and you don't know why. Mm. Right now, some of us, weed is just starting to like not hit anymore. Come on. Like these sugar-coated messages that don't deal with real, they're just not hitting anymore. I need substance. The, the, the porn, it's just, uh, mm. it's not hitting anymore. You start to feel disgusted after you do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The vibrators cursing people out, it's starting to get you this, this nauseous feeling. Yeah, yeah. Those are all signs to the fact that something on the inside of you. Yeah. There's something on the inside of you. Yeah. And, and God is exposing that nauseous thing yeah. on the inside of you because it's going to start to make you question, what's happening? Mm. Something's different. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Go but ahead. but th there's a couple of people, because you know there's a few people who have been pregnant, mm -hmm. women, and didn't know that they were pregnant. They didn't have the nauseous. They didn't have anything. And they and they've and they've been walking. And then they go to the doctor and they say, "You're pregnant. You're about to get." I I didn't I didn't know. You got to pay attention. You got to be attentive. You can't do some of the same. If you if you trying to get pregnant, right? Then you got to be. You got to start expecting. You have to start expecting. But. People who, if you're not paying attention to spiritual things, you mm -hmm. won't see spiritual things beginning to happen. But wow. when you are wanting and expecting spiritual things to happen, you start to look in different places. You start to begin to expect, Lord, I'm expect, uh, not now, but it's, it's coming. I'm, it, it's coming. And so I, you don't want to be the person, oh, well, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm pregnant. I didn't know because you're just living and you're just going about life as regular. You don't expect anything to change. Yeah. So you just be business as usual, that I that is not going to be your life, and I speak that over you right now. Talk. You're beginning to look for something different. You desire something different, and you're saying, God, create in me a hunger so that you can take the things out of me that are inside of me that don't need to be there because I want to be for you and only for you, period. Yeah, yeah. powerful, powerful, man. Yeah, yeah. L listen, I think we have to really understand that the healing is tied to two things. What's that? Speaking and somebody speaking into you. Mm. When you speak the language of God, I surrender. I can't do this on my own. This was unhealthy. This hurt me. I do have a little boy that does not know how to handle anger. I do have a little boy. Give me, give me, give me. That's my four-year-old son. Favorite word. That's mine. That's mine. That's mine. I want that. I want that. <laughs> and you, you, it's still there as a man. I want her. I want that. Yeah. I want that money. I want that. that. Give me, give me. God, I, I need you to deal with that. Speaking that in prayer, speaking that to a pastor, to a spiritually mature individual, a therapist, whatever it may be, that is a form of beginning the journey of healing, and then also somebody who speaks into you. Isaac, mm -hmm. let, let's, let's kind of just deal with the power of, we're both husbands, of just yeah. really being spoken into by our wives. And, and mm -hmm. ladies, I really want you to hear this because you don't recognize that your mouth is an activator. Come on. There's man. a lot of conversation yeah. about the spirit of Jezebel, but not enough about the spirit of Abigail. She knew a language to communicate to David to get him to relent in his wrath against come Nabal. Come on, come on, man. To touch on that. Come on. Speak into me. Speak into him. You know, I think that that's one of the things that a man, most men don't even recognize that we desire. Mm -hmm. And we don't even recognize that that was a void. Yeah. And so, for example, when my wife uh, we were engaged. Mm -hmm. She said the words to me, you are a good man. Right? After we got married, she looked at me and said, you are such a good man. 
that doesn't mean anything to you because you don't know context. Yeah. We've been back and forth nine years. Yeah. We've wow. been to the valley and back. I walked away from that relationship. We have a testimony of God's redemption. But no matter what we've been through, when she looked at me and said, you are a good man, I wept. I'm going to tell you why I wept. She made you do to Jacob. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you why I wept. Because I realized that I had not heard those words before. Mm. I had only heard those words two times from some elder women at the ministry that I've been in my congregation, right? Who were speaking over me right before that, right? Mm. But she looks at me and she says, I'm talking to my wife, she said, now she knows my history. Mm. She knows my imperfections, my frailties. Mm. And she looks at me, at me, and says, you are a good man. I cried because I've rejected. This is why many times men don't receive compliments well. Hmm. We don't receive compliments well yeah. because we're so accustomed to the narrative of what's been told to us about our mess ups, our miss ups and how we've fallen short and how we're not a leader and how we're not doing this, we're not doing that. So when a compliment does come our way, we reject it because we don't believe it's true. And wow. so for me, I told my wife, I'm not a good man. Like, I rejected it, and she spoke it again. I said, I, I'm just not. I, 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 I've made mistakes, and I'm, I'm imperfect. She spoke it again, and she, and she spoke it to the point where I had to receive it. I meet the pastor, and I've been so accustomed to rejecting any type of compliments because I always think they're coming with some type of angle and it's not true and, and if you say this and you're gonna say this, I have been absent of people speaking into my life, women who knew me. I'm not talking about people who know of you and people who've heard a sermon and said the sermon is great. I'm talking about people who know you, know you. Women to speak into my life and say, hey, I want you to know, I don't need anything from you. I, I, I just need you to know you are a good man. And when she told me that, she herself helped me through God's power to begin breaking a cycle because I did not realize that I, there's something down inside of me that didn't see myself as a good man, right? Hmm. I'm good, good at preaching, good, good at pastoral care, good at, you know, school. I'm good at a lot of things, but just a good man, yeah. like a good boyfriend, a good, you know, husband, a good. No, because I, I made too many mistakes and nobody's ever told me that. Yeah. And, and so what I'm saying is the power. The wife and the Lord introduced a scripture to me. I want to read this to you. It says in Proverbs 12, verse 4, the integrity and strength of a virtuous wife transforms her husband into an honored king. Hmm. But the wife who disgraces her husband, get this, it says, weakens the strength of his identity. Wow. Right? My wife speaking into me is something that helped to break a pattern, a belief system that was deep within me that I didn't even realize it was. Yeah, yeah. This is so funny because my wife said the same thing to me, but when um, we were courting, she said, you are a king amongst men. Mm. I never heard a language like that mm. before. And like I stated before many times, boxing taught me the value of the voice of your corner. Mm -hmm. They see things I can't see. Yeah. And a lot of times, I haven't had anybody speak into me things that I can't see about myself because all I see is my behind the scenes. Yeah, man. And one of the beauties of love is when I could see you're pregnant even when you don't even know you're a child. So we wanted to just kind of come on here and deal with a, um, 
unfamiliar topic, especially in the church. Yeah. Um, but I, I really want wholeness to happen because yeah. when, when men heal, homes heal. Mm. When, when men heal, marriages heal, generations yeah. heal. Yeah. And the healing of men is tied to defeating that ancient warfare. Come on. So God, would you, would you allow this word on tonight to just touch the hearts of your people? Would you allow for there to be a supernatural healing that happens in the earth, God, of just, of just us just crying out, recognizing, God, I've been hurt. Yes. And God, forgive us for trying to put on the fig leaves because everybody mm. else around us is in uniform. Help us to become naked because true transformation comes when we are naked the same way Moses came before you you said take off your sandals for the the place that you're at is holy ground it was his bare feet God help us become bare naked with you mm. in the spirit and also in the natural and would you surround us with voices that don't just speak to us but speak in us in Jesus name we pray amen